Hi there, this is Jim with Smoky Lake Maple Products. Well, today we're going to talk about frost and freezing in the evaporator and the SAP supply system. The SAP line can freeze, your whole bulk tank can freeze, your, your, your SAP supply can freeze on a very cold night. Your head tank, which supplies by gravity the SAP that's going to feed your evaporator, that can freeze the float box can freeze, and the main boiling pans can freeze as well. Uh, very important to consider all the facets involved with it to have a successful boil and prevent damage from frost or from starting your evaporator without sap supply. The tank that supplies the sap to the evaporator by gravity. Uh, your head tank might be as simple as a plastic jug elevated just so high. It doesn't need to be that high. It's, uh, the higher it is, the more head pressure you get, but it doesn't need to be that high. I've seen head tanks that were just five gallon pails with a hose connected to the bottom that fed into the float box or even straight into the evaporator pan on a small hobby setup where there isn't a float box. If your operation has a pump, it could maybe be a... Um, some kind of utility pump that has a hose going down into the sap. Those are those freeze really easy because they're not immersed in a big tank of water. Um, so they, they freeze really easily. What we have is a submersible pump. We use a pump like this that drops into our tank of sap. Um, this is also very susceptible to freezing if it's if it's sitting out, see it, even after days, we can still shake liquid out of this. If that liquid freezes in the pump, it can keep the impeller from turning, and that's all it takes to interrupt sap flow. If, if, you're, if you're filtering your sap, not everyone does that. In fact, that's maybe a little bit unusual to filter sap through um, the beginning stages. But if you have a filter in line, often there will be a housing that surrounds the filter that holds water. It's, a, it's like a bucket, and that should actually be taken apart when you're done boiling the previous night. That should be taken apart and drained. Because if that freezes, there's a good chance it's going to crack and um, break, and you'll need to replace it. But if, it is, uh, if, it, if, the, if you didn't take that provision the night before, and if it is currently frozen, not broken, then you'll definitely want to unthread that and thaw it out carefully and slowly. Uh, you don't want to thaw it out too quick because sometimes that's all it takes to finally crack something that's frozen. So thaw it out in a, in a pail of warm water or something. That's a safe way to unthaw things like that. To, I'm sorry, to uh, thaw things like that. If you have rigid tubing, rigid pipe feeding the evaporator, if it's copper or PVC, those can actually burst if they're left full of sap the previous time you boil and they freeze. Those can freeze. That's why it's nice to have a flexible tube, something that can stretch with the frost. But your supply lines can freeze. We talked about the pump. They can be damaged. If, if that housing freezes solid, it can crack. Uh, your very pans can freeze and maybe sometimes be damaged. The pans are often a little bit safer if you're, if you're running a continuous flow evaporator and you leave the contents in the pan in between boiling. They can freeze, you'll often see them become slushy, but normally they're safe from frost damage because there's enough sugar, there's a high enough sugar, sugar concentration in the pans to prevent that sap from really having a lot of um, potential freezing force. But it is still something to be considered if, if the forecast is calling for temperatures, uh, especially in single digits Fahrenheit or below zero Fahrenheit, and that's pretty serious stuff that at that point you'll want to either drain the pans completely or at least put a light bulb in the firebox. Especially if you have an airtight arch, putting a light bulb or a, like an incubator light or a small heater inside the firebox, that's really all it takes to keep the, the pans from uh, becoming damaged from frost. So one other thing to be mentioned is float box. The float box is set aside from the main pan, if you have a float box. Uh, some evaporators will have one, some will have two. But the float box is set aside from the main evaporator, so it's a small um, amount of liquid that is much more susceptible to freezing. The sight glass, especially, needs to be considered. Um, when there's frost in the forecast, 
Um, our sight glasses are drainable. I guess I shouldn't say most of them are because that's not necessarily true, but ours are all drainable. Um, to drain our sight glass alone, you would just close this valve and then open this valve. In fact, I'll just crack it open. You'll see liquid come out. So that's how you drain the, the sight glass. Um, anyway, that's something that should definitely be considered because this is right out in the open. If you have a preheater in your hood, a preheater is is extremely susceptible. In fact, if you leave a preheater full of sap and, and ex expose it to freezing temperatures, it will almost definitely be damaged from that frost. Preheaters are, should be easy to drain and they should be drained every single time. Um, so that's, that kind of wraps up the, the multitude of different things to be considered in your evaporator system when it comes to frost and freezing temperatures. And that's what it boils down to. Done so already, you can download our complete evaporator startup checklist at the address on your screen. In our next video, we will cover the auto draw portion of the startup checklist. Thank you for watching!